Hey, do you want these? Do you want to be able to do this? Well, guess what? I got the methods for you guys. Alright, was good, Swarm? And in today's video, I'm going to be going fully in depth on Ferryman. I'm going to talk about how you could cheese him, how you could get all these sweet, sweet idols and relics that you want, and how you could even speedrun him. Now, as you guys have probably noticed, Deep Oaken has a lot of bosses in game, ranging from difficult to pretty easy. And we can see that one boss in particular has the lowest risk and the highest reward, and that's Ferryman. Ferryman has got to be one of the easiest bosses, assuming that you have the proper build for him. And luckily for you guys, I got the build. <laughs> now, before we get into the build, I want to talk a little more about Ferryman first. Now, for those who don't know what's going on, Ferryman is a boss that resides at Boatsman's Watch in the Eastern Luminate. You can get to him by sailing past Miner's Landing into the Void Sea, making sure you don't get jumped by Kaido or by sailing into the Whirlpool. Once you get to the island, you will encounter a summoning circle. By placing four campfire pits and igniting them, you will start the ritual and be teleported into Ferryman. One thing I do want to point out to you guys is you don't need to place them all in the actual spots on the outer circle. You could actually place them all in the inner circle so you could use less flint by lighting two campfires at once. Also, one thing I do want to point out to you guys, if you guys are doing a lot of ferryments, you want to make sure that the little white circle in the middle is glowing, because if it isn't, that means your server's bugged. So all you'll have to do is server hop and find a new server that isn't bugged. But once we get into Ferryman's little realm, we can challenge him to a little wager. Now, after we swiftly kill him, don't worry, I'm going to go over his patterns later, we can get five chests for winning. And these chests have great loot. The loot pool contains the following items. Almost all legendary rings. I'm pretty sure it contains almost all the earrings in the game. Umbral Obsidian. And Nemet Sickles. And then we get onto the good items. After those, we can get Karulian Ice with Self for a ton. Storm's Eyes, which are great for a lot of lightning builds. And finally, Relics. Ferryman can drop three relics being Smith's Alloy, Moon's Eye Tome, and the best one of all being Idols of Yun Shoal. With the Smith's Alloys, we can upgrade our weapon stars and reroll the traits on them. So if you got stuck with a weapon with weight on it, fret not. You'll be able to change it as you please. The Moon's Eye is great for min-maxing builds as you get 99 knowledge the first time you use it, and then you get 20 knowledge every time you use it after. So all I'm going to say is I would never use it on the same build more than once. And finally, idols which act as a free Yun Shou Wish, which is great for rerolling your bells as you want. Now I get what you're saying, the other bosses can drop these relics too, so why should I farm Ferryman? Well, Ferryman if you didn't know, is the fastest boss to kill in the game, with players killing him in as little as 13 seconds, and luckily for you guys, I have actually made a build that is able to achieve this time. You just have to be good enough with the build to get that. With the build, I am able to consistently kill him in under 30 seconds every run thanks to the fact that it has a ton of matcha damage. So let's talk about the attack patterns and how this build takes advantage of him. So in the first phase, the attack he always starts off with is going to be a lightning assault. You could counter this by parrying 3 times in succession. Be careful though as sometimes he can speed it up so be wary. The second attack is lightning strikes, in which he'll strike the area where you're standing with many lightning bolts. These again can be parried if you have good timing, but it's best to just run around and avoid them. His third attack is Lightning Clones, where he'll summon two waves of two clones to chase you and try and hit you. On being hit or hitting the clones, they will disappear and stop attacking you. Those are the only attacks he has in the first phase, so once you learn how to counter them, his first phase is going to be pretty easy for you guys. In his second phase, two of his monsters level up and he gets a new one. Lightning Assault will now always attack you with very quick succession. Once you get the timing down for this one, it's the exact same every time. Lightning Strikes is down very fast, so be on your toes when he casts this, as it can melt your health very easily. And finally, he has replaced his Lightning Clones with Grand Javelin. He will throw out four Javelins that do a great amount of damage, but are easily avoidable, and if you're cool enough, you could just parry them. Besides that, those are all the attacks he uses in the fight, so once you learn them, he's very easy to deal with. One game Ferryman follows is that if you try to M1 him too much, he will teleport to a different spot around the area. We don't actually have to worry about him teleporting as we don't M1 him, which is where our great build comes in. The best builds for Ferryman are those who prioritize matcha damage, allowing for us to really easily fight and kill him. Now, before I get into the build, I'm just going to show you guys a quick run of me using it so you can get a general idea on the build. So 
So as you guys saw, this is a Gale Dawnwalker with Ardor Scream and Heretic Sutra. On this build, we go for powerful talents like Aether Overdrive, Piercing Will, Approaching Singularity, and a few other aspects I'll mention later on. This allows for us to get up to 100% Mantra Penetration on our build, allowing for us to do some crazy damage. Now I will say unfortunately, while this build is capable of killing Ferryman in 13 seconds, I'm not able to due to my major skill issue. Speaking of skill issues, have you ever needed help with bosses such as Ferryman or needed help killing monsters in general? Well look no further. The Deep Oaken PvE Hub is a server where you can get all the help you need. From farming to Delivian to running hell mode, the PvE server is a place where you could go where you need help. Speaking of the topic on hand, many people in the server actually carry other people through Ferryman for just a fee of a few thousand nodes. So if you guys want to run Ferryman and get knowledge with someone to help you do it, you don't have to worry about doing it alone. Thanks to the PvE Hub, you no longer have to be afraid of facing the monsters alone. Now, let's get back to the build. So for the build, I'm just going to explain everything I did and I'm going to show you guys all the talents I got so you guys can get a general idea on the build. So as you guys can see, this is a Shrine of Order build that prioritizes doing damage with Insanity and Intelligence. I go for talents such as Lose Your Mind and Piercing Will to do great damage. I also get Ardor Scream for the big damage while against Ferryman as it's literally just free damage. And I also get Taunt just for sometimes getting extra damage against them. So this is a Shrine of War build, so I'm going to explain it a little bit, but the build will be down in the description if you guys just want to take a look at that. So we're going to start off with 25 Charisma and 80 Willpower to help get us the Charmcaster talents, as well as getting us talents like Defiance, Lose Your Mind, and Piercing Will. We're then going to put 30 points into Strength and 50 points into Fortitude to get talents like Exoskeleton to the finish, and of course Grasp on Reality and the Face so we're not taking damage from our Willpower. Of course, before we Shrine of Order, we need to get Ardor and Ardor Scream. If you guys are having issues getting Ardor, you of course can go to the PvE server, or if you want to, I'm going to be making a better in-depth guide on killing Kaido and how to properly cheese him and in all the spots. So if you guys want to check that out, feel free to click on the video once I eventually make it. But besides that, if you guys are having trouble getting Ardor Scream from Strata Chance, or if you're just trying to roll it, you can go to Mystic and say, my body is an instrument that resonates its own frequency, and that'll help you get Ardor Scream. After that, we Shrine of Order, and then we obviously put the rest of our points into Intelligence and Gale Breath. We put all our points into Intelligence so we can get towns such as Neural Overload, Approaching Singularity, and of course, Ether Overdrive for the extra pen. For armor, I of course go Prophet's Cloak for the extra damage, and I of course go for 6 Song Chant to make sure we also get that extra Mantra Pen. And for Origins, I decided to pick the Void Heart as you're able to quickly teleport between Ferryman and a place where you can sell and get new items like Wood, Flint, and being able to just access the Antiquarian. So just like that, I'm able to farm him as much as I want, and if I need to, I can just teleport right back to him. But with all that being said, if you guys do still need help with the build, or if you guys have any questions, the comments are open and my DMs are also open as well. But besides all that, that's the whole build, and I hope you all have a great day.